Egan and Harry's desperate move with Lily Betts' photos. Traders have no way back. The Sussexes have released a beautiful new photo of a little Lily Bet Diana Mountbatten Windsor. But the story behind the snap speaks volumes. Hello, and a very warm welcome back to the Top Half News Channel. First of all, there are a couple of things we got to get straight right off the bat. So Lily bet Diana Mountbatten Windsor she is an absolute angel and those Spencer redhead genes, they must be the biological equivalent of tungsten. Early on Tuesday morning, Harry and Meghan decided to release a portrait taken of Lily Bed on her first birthday on Saturday during casual intimate backyard picnic of Frogmore Cottage. So that happened while the family were back in the UK, celebrating the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. And they also published a second black and white photo of a group of people, including Meghan and Lily Bet. What, after you have an intimate gathering, you don't publish photos for the whole world to see anyway? Okay. So these photos of Lily Bet are the kind of heart-melting images that parents all over the world treasure. And they're also the kind of hard-melting images and memories. The parents all over the world happily keep private in a photo album. Or maybe at most, they'll share those photos with loved ones, but it's the Sussexes as we're talking about. And when have they ever actually just stuck to tradition? So the obvious question here is why Harry and Meghan are no longer working members of the royal family. They ran away from that a long time ago. Now, as everybody knows, there is an expectation. If you're a working royal that you'll regularly share carefully controlled snaps of the children's lives with the public. On Archie's first birthday in 2020, they did post a video of Meghan reading a story to him. They did that supposedly to raise money for charity, but since then they have done things. However they wanted to, they have not followed protocol or tradition at all. Last year for Archie, second birthday, they only released photo of him holding some balloons and that photo was taken from the back and it was a weird photo, too. Same goes for their Christmas card that year. Uh, in that photo, they were basically all rendered as illustration. And then last month for Archie's third birthday, nothing at all was released. I mean, we wouldn't have even known that it happened. We hadn't remembered it and they didn't put out any kind of image when Lily Bet was born last year in December of last year, they did share a Christmas photo of the family, but you really couldn't see that much of either child's face. So it seemed like Meghan and Harry had made the decision, which was pretty sensible to protect their children's privacy. And so they had decided not to allow the media into their kids' lives at all. I mean, I don't blame them for that. I understand their reasons behind that decision, but now we're seeing these photos of Lily Bed. So the timing of this release is very important. If we want to understand the surprising change of course on the Sussexes part, the shots came out only about 24 hours after they arrived back in the US after their IC trip, back to Harry's homeland and curiously, it suffers only hours after William and Catherine, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge put out a series of very touchy behind-the-scenes photos of their kids during the Jubilee. So, okay. We'll put Lily's birthday aside for a minute. Their four-day trip back in the UK was a pretty much a PR disaster for them. They were sidelined by the royal family in the most humiliating and obvious way possible. During the Trooping the Colour ceremony, the only Windsors they were seen with were Princess and the grandchildren and the 86-year-old Duke of Kent. So one report suggested that they actually weren't even invited to the family lunch and that happened after. But given that the Queen is incredibly polite and she does still love her grandson, I'm not sure if I believe that rumor. And the next day, when they rolled up to the service of Thanksgiving at St. Paul's Cathedral, they heard some boos from the crowd outside. Now there were some shears too, but I heard a lot of booing and things took a pretty embarrassing turn when they finally got inside. Now maybe it was the Queen who conceded by allowing them to come there in their own car and not the bus put on for her other grandchildren. And they were offered their own individual procession to their seats. But that was exactly where any gestures of kindness start. 
so we can see them being led to their second row seats in the middle of a collage of B and C Liz Windsors. One thing that I really noticed was when Harry's cousins, Princess Beatrice and Eugenie and their husbands had to stand up to make way for them. It was a pretty obvious sign of their fall from grace and live TV cameras were there to capture the whole thing as Meghan and Harry were literally and figuratively sidelined. So then they along with the rest of the congregation had to wait about 20 minutes for the first string royal players to show up when Prince Charles and William and Catherine arrived, there was not a single report suggesting that there was any kind of eye contact even between them and the Sussex pair. I can only guess that people were sensing that ghost of Oprah Winfrey lurking inside the Christopher Wren designed church. Now maybe Maggie cap that Cheshire cat grin on her face from start to finish. And there may have been a few images of Harry laughing with his cousins, but you could clearly notice the strain and the discomfort they were feeling. And then, yeah, that was it. Where did they go? They completely disappeared. They didn't go to a single other jubilee event though. Courtiers would surely have been willing to coordinate things so that they would have been able to attend without having to come close to the Cambridges. And then on Sunday, there were tens of thousands of people gathered lining the parade route for the Platinum Patents and the rest of the Queen's family. They were just feeling the love and the warm jubilee glow of cheering crowds. And they were also really enjoying these feelings of national pride. But what were the Sussexes doing? Oh, they were already on their way out and information that has come out since then only make that trip look like. Of course, they traveled in a private jet and that's a trip that would have cost them about $278,000, according to the Sun. So what that works out to is that they spend assuming they footed the bill personally, and it wasn't some loan from some billionaire friend. Anyway, Basically it amounts to them spending almost $70,000 per day to be given the cold shoulder in front of everybody. And then another report came out from the Sun, claiming that the Queen had actually banned Meghan and Harry from bringing along a photographer. When the 96-year-old finally met her tiny namesake for the first time. An insider has said, Harry and Meghan wanted their photographer to capture the moment Lily Bed met the Queen, but they were told no chance. It was a private family meeting. So essentially, it's pretty difficult to see how the Sussex's grand British return could be viewed as anything other than a big disaster. They did not reconcile with family. There was no big PR win. So because they didn't bring any cameras with them, they also didn't get any good Netflix footage. And all of that happened at the expense of their egos and probably also their bank balance. So now my friends, we have finally come to the release of Tuesdays, a lily bed images, which considering the preceding days, events begin to look like a pretty transparent attempt to right the publicity ship and change the prevailing narrative from an embarrassing failure to, ooh, baby. If Harry and Meghan's jaunt in the UK had been as a success, would we actually even be seeing these images? I mean, if it was all glowing coverage and flattering opinion pieces, would they have bothered publishing that photo? If they had come out looking like the bigger, better people. If they had made it look like they were just trying to overlook the palace's alleged sins of institutional racism and cruelty in order to celebrate his grandmother's big moment. Would we have been seeing this image at all? Anyway, I guess, I can say that at least both lily beds did look like they had a pretty good time over the past few days. Although when, if ever they may both be in the same country again. Well, that's another question. And you, what do you think about this photo? Please tell me what you think below in the comments section. And we'll also talk about Meghan and Harry's daughter. If you think my video was useful, don't be afraid to like and share it with your friends who would also enjoy it. And don't forget to subscribe to the Top Half News channel to get more videos in the future. Now thank you for watching goodbye and I will be back to see you in the next video.